thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I'd like to welcome Dr. Burks and uh, appreciate you being here. I'd also like to thank you for your four decades of service to our country, including 29 uh, years in the United States Army. Like Groundhog Day, my Democrat colleagues will use today's hearing to continue their political vendetta against the former Trump administration while continuing to mask the many failures that have occurred with respect to COVID-19 under the Biden administration. It is our job to perform congressional oversight over the administration. That's why Republicans on this subcommittee have focused on serious issues like the CDC's school reopening guidance and the emails that prove the Biden administration colluded with union bosses to keep millions of American children locked out of their classrooms. We now know that the social isolation and school closures caused by the COVID lockdowns resulted in serious mental health issues and dramatic learning loss for millions of American kids. The last time I tried to talk about this incredibly important issue, Mr. Chairman, you'd urged me not to look backward, stating, quote, I would hope we won't spend all our time today talking about yesterday. I'm concerned about tomorrow and the day after. He went on to say, all of us can spend the rest of our lives talking about what happened before COVID-19, or we can spend a little time trying to figure out how best to move forward from whatever mistakes may have been made, whoever may have made them, or we can spend all of our time assigning blame. Yet here we are today, having yet another hearing with a witness to discuss things that happened more than two years ago while working for the former president. No hearings with the Biden's first COVID-19 response coordinator and Dr. Burks's immediate successor, Jeff Zients. No hearings with President Biden's current coordinator, Dr. Ashish Jha. And of course, no hearings in more than a year with President Biden's chief medical advisor, Dr. Fauci. In fact, now marks 434 days since Dr. Fauci has testified before any House committee, any House committee. Why are they hiding Dr. Fauci? And why has it been 434 days since Dr. Fauci has testified before a committee? We've asked for him. In fact, one of the last hearings, we asked him to be our witness uh, on the Republican side, and he told us he would have liked to come and be a witness, but that uh, the chairman and the Biden administration wouldn't extend him that invitation. So we will continue to ask, Mr. Chairman, that you extend Dr. Fauci that invitation. And we would ask the Biden administration to allow him to come testify, not to keep him hidden for over a year now from any House committee. Of course, I welcome Dr. Burks's testimony today, but I'd be remiss if I didn't point out the irony of those past statements talking about the past. It is noteworthy that this subcommittee would focus on the events of years ago while denying our ability to address the failures of the Biden administration that are still going on to this day. More Americans died from COVID during President Biden's first year in office than President Trump's, even though multiple vaccines were available when President Biden came into office. And we're currently dealing, dealing with the serious impact COVID lockdown policies have had on millions of our young children. I'm worried the effects will last for years to come on those kids, jeopardizing their future ability to achieve their dreams. We need a proper investigation into the origins of COVID. Obviously, Mr. Chairman, you're well aware we've been asking for a hearing on the origins of COVID for well over a year now, and we will continue to. And it begs the question why the select subcommittee refuses to hold a hearing on the origins when the World Health Organization and now a growing list of leading experts in the scientific community all deem this worthy of investigation. Dr. Jeffrey Sachs of Columbia University, who himself thinks that this virus came from a lab, so it's quote, a blunder of biotech, not a natural spillover. And now it's being reported that Dr. Tedros, yes, the head of the World Health Organization, is quietly confiding to officials that he believes this pandemic originated in a lab in China. I wonder if Dr. Sachs and Dr. Tedros 
to use the chairman's own words, are, quote, using the issue of the origin of the virus to shift accountability from President Trump to Dr. Anthony Fauci, as we were accused of doing when we started asking for hearing into the origins of COVID, when now you see these leading health experts also questioning whether COVID started in the Wuhan lab. We should have that hearing. More than one million Americans have died from COVID. We should understand how this virus started, not only because we owe it to those that have died, but also to protect against future pandemics. China was doing risky research in a lab that likely caused this pandemic. Did China lie to the world about the virus and how it spread? These are questions we should absolutely know the answer to. To that end, I know Dr. Burks has told us before that the origins of the virus are detectable if China would be willing to share the earliest sequences of the virus. And Dr. Burks has previously t testified or said in earlier statements from scientists, scientific publications, and the media that downplaying the lab leak were premature and not based on data. I'm glad we will get the opportunity to hear what she has to say about China's involvement and how the U.S. and the rest of the world were misled by China and the World Health Organization back in those early days. I also look forward to hearing Dr. Burks's suggestions for reforming the CDC. Over the course of the pandemic, Americans have lost trust in what once was a premier public health organization. Their failures must be confronted in order for that trust to be restored. With that, Mr. Chairman, happy to yield back the balance of my time. Thank you very much, Mr. Scalise. <clears throat> Dr. Birch. <clears throat>